so we are going to learn crystal oscillators this is the last oscillator in this oscillator stop and uh, we have learned rc phase shift oscillators where resistance and capacitance are used to find the frequency and the second one is the lc oscillator where inductor and capacitor are used to produce the oscillations now what is a crystal crystal is a separate material which will have uh, so many faces the best example uh, we can say crystalline structure example uh, uh, quartz is the example for it. and now it will have faces diamond color faces and different different faces untam valle then chikinat untad anamata cut chestar different different faces untam valla light paina pudu baga shine reflection ekku undi shine avtha undi so in the same way crystal will have the type of structure and uh, why we are uh, we have gone to the crystal oscillators means there will be a drift in frequency if we use rc phase shift oscillator and lc oscillators uh, after running for a long time chaala kaalam vaadin tarvata aa components tho chesina aa filter aa oscillator same avtay ante they will uh, have the different output Uh, when compared with the starting of the operation and the mundala oka frequency set chesa frequency produce chestam then oka 10 samsharal tarvata ade frequency raadu so there is a very chance of frequency instability or frequency variation of the oscillators which uh, we have dealt previously and rc phase shift gaani lc oscillators lo gaani frequency variation unde chance undi but uh, to have the constant frequency ante inke emaina oscillators unnaya long run lo kuda avi frequency stable ga fixed ga manam emaithe set chesamo adhe frequency icha oscillators emaina unnaya ani ee material tho oscillator ni tayar chesthe ila avutadi ani search chesthe we have got an oscillator which is called crystal oscillator it will have a very stable frequency so kavati uh, in computers in digital circuits in microcontrollers everywhere we are going to use clock frequency a clock frequency kosam ee crystal oscillators use chestam next so there are so many materials uh, which are called crystals rochel salt quartz tourmaline అలా మెటీరియల్స్ చాలా ఉన్నాయి అండ్ కేన్ షుగర్ మన పంచదార కూడా క్రిస్టల్ అంటారు దాన్ని షుగర్ క్రిస్టల్స్ ఇవన్నీ కూడా ఇవన్నీ కూడా క్రిస్టల్స్ బట్ ద మోస్ట్ యూజ్డ్ మెటీరియల్ క్రిస్టల్ ఈజ్ క్వాట్స్ క్వాట్స్ క్రిస్టల్ వాడతాం వాచెస్లో కానీ దేంట్లో అయినా క్వాట్స్ వాడతాం సో నా వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు లర్న్ హౌ దిస్ క్రిస్టల్ ఈజ్ యూజ్ టు ప్రొడ్యూస్ ద ఆసిలేషన్స్ దట్ ఈస్ ద మెయిన్ థింగ్ and this crystal is going to have an effect which is called piezo electric effect piezo electric effect what is the meaning of the piezo electric effect piezo electric effect and artha enta ante suppose this crystal will have so many faces chaala faces untai and these if some uh, force is applied some force is applied between two phases then some potential will be developed across the phases which are opposite to that two phases a rend phases ki vitrekanga vere phases machilo potential anedi develop avutadi so if you apply a force between two phases then you will get potential difference across the phases which are opposite to the other two phases so this effect is called piezoelectric effect 
this effect is called piezoelectric effect. And I can uh, say it uh, in a simple language that if you mechanical pressure apply to electrical output, then that effect is called piezoelectric effect. And there is another effect which is called inverse piezoelectric effect. effect that is called inverse piezoelectric effect. So in this effect, if you apply a voltage across two phases, then you will get the mechanical deformation in the crystal or change in shape of the crystal will occur due to the pressure uh, due to the voltage applied across two phases that means if you apply an electric field between phases you will get some mechanical deformation there is a mechanical change in the other phases so this is called inverse piezoelectric effect and if you apply a variable voltage across two plates or faces, then the material goes into the mechanical vibration. The material goes into the mechanical vibration. So this mechanical vibrations will lead to the term which is called frequency or oscillations. So, in this way, the crystal is going to be used to produce the oscillations. And this is the symbol for a crystal. Here, the two faces of the crystal are attached to the two plates. And in between, a crystal is placed. And you have to know one thing here that this crystal is a perfect dielectric. That means this is an insulating material. So these two metallic plates between this is a dielectric then it works as a capacitor and that capacitance is represented here with the C dash. With the C dash. And, uh, and we, can uh, we can write the electrically equivalent as well as the mechanically equivalent for this crystal. So, how we can uh, write the electrical equivalent means we can, uh, uh, we can have the, we can represent the crystal with an inductor, with a resistor and a capacitor which are analogous to the, which are analogous to the inductor is analogous to the mass of the mechanical equivalent. Mechanical equivalent lo e inductor ne mass toti equations tha. and capacitor is equivalent to the compliance is equivalent to the compliance in the mechanical equivalent which is the reciprocal of which is the reciprocal of spring constant which is the reciprocal of spring constant so we don't know what are these but the mechanical students can uh, have an idea about uh, these uh, terms. But we don't know actually what are those. And uh, because crystal can be represented as electrical circuit as well as the mechanical uh, circuit. That is the reason we can represent this crystal into an electrical equivalent. And that, uh, that element is mass equivalent in mechanical and compliance equivalent in mechanical circuits and what is R? R is the viscous damping factor viscous damping factor in the mechanical system so so R will represent the losses of the losses of the crystal R will represent the losses of the crystal and it is also called a, a crystal structural friction. Friction Buddha represents. So these are the uh, elements with which we can represent the equivalent of a crystal. Equivalent of a crystal. Now what we can observe here? <coughs> we can observe a series LC and a parallel LC circuits. So a series LC 
will resonate at a particular frequency and a parallel LC will resonate at another frequency. That means uh, by using this circuit, if you apply voltage across these two terminals, you will get two resonating frequencies. One is called series resonance circuit frequency and the other is the parallel resonance circuit frequency. So, so that is the reason here the diagram will show two resonance frequencies. So this is the diagram drawn between frequency and the impedance of the circuit. When the circuit is having the series resonating frequency, then its impedance is going to be very less. So when you operate the crystal in series resonating frequency, the crystal will offer a very less resistance to the other circuits which are surrounding it. And if the, this circuit is operated in the parallel resonating frequency, then this frequency will have very high impedance. <coughs> and we can consider it as infinite impedance and this can be considered as zero impedance. And the same thing is shown in this graph also. And <coughs> for, the, for the conceptual um, knowledge only. I have drawn these two. This is from Millman textbook and this is from other textbook. And here we can observe one thing here. That is here this is a series resonating frequency. <coughs> that is 2 pi fs. So series resonating frequency and this is nothing but <coughs> Here, this is the spot of parallel resonating frequency. So, here parallel resonating frequency is having a very high reactance. It is not touching at all. And it, it shows the infinite impedance. And a series resonating circuit is nothing but this Vs which is equal to 0. This is the ideal circuit. And while we are dealing with the crystal oscillator, we have to assume that this, that is losses in the crystal as very less, almost to zero. So only when we consider L and C, we don't have R. And moreover, how much frequency of this crystal oscillator is going to produce? So it will produce uh, uh, hundreds of kilohertz of frequency. It is going to produce hundreds of kilohertz, that is megahertz frequency it is going to produce. And also, uh, moreover, it is this circuit. Because this R is less, the quality factor of uh, this circuit, quality factor of the inductor or the capacitor are, are going to be very, very high. Very, very high means its uh, value is going to be several thousands to, several thousands to 10 to the power of 6. It is a very large value. So quality factor, quality factor 20,000, uh, 1 lakh quality factor and not a joke and matter. And a, Yenta yenta uh, yenta losses ta kunte yenta quality unta di a material wala. So what is the formula for a quality factor for an inductor? Omega L by R. Ikara R chala ta kuga bati quality factor is going to be very high. Alage 1 by omega C R. Idi koda quality factor of a capacitor. Ikri koda resistance denominator lo undi. I am uh, assuming resistance has very very less value. So my quality factor is going to be very high. This is, uh, the, this is one of the <coughs> advantages of the crystal oscillators. And next. Now, now we are going to have, now we are going to have, <coughs> what is the? Uh, procedure. 
so we know that when you apply a varying voltage uh, at the uh, for this crystal then we are going to get the oscillations of this crystal and this is nothing but the frequency produced by the crystal oscillator now suppose i assume that uh, the, this circuit is uh, having only a reactance if this circuit is having only a reactance so my reactance i don't know whether it is a inductive reactance or a capacitive reactance jx is equal to minus j by omega c dash omega square minus omega s square by omega square minus omega p square so this is my reactance for the crystal oscillator <coughs> now for a series um, for a series resonant frequency so this series resonant frequency omega s is going to be 1 by l c and this can be written as 1 by l into 1 by c i can write like this also but the parallel resonance frequency omega p is uh, going to be 1 by l into 1 by c plus 1 by c dash <coughs> here c dash is this capacitance and for a uh, typical um, crystal oscillator this c dash is going to be 1000 times more than this c this 1000 times more than this c so this value will be large this value will be large when compared with this value so 1 by large value will give a little value so what i can observe that omega omega p parallel resonating frequency is going to be slightly more than series resonating frequency ante enti series resonating frequency vachaka parallel resonating frequency ane chaala span lo vastadanu ankovachu so it is slightly more than the series resonating frequency ante pakka pakkane untay wave form lo chuste ganaka పక్క పక్కనే ఉంటాయి అన్నమాట పక్క పక్కనే ఉంటాయి సిరీస్ రిజినేటింగ్ అండ్ ప్యారలల్ రిజినేటింగ్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీలో పెద్ద తేడా ఏమి ఉండదు చాలా దగ్గరగా ఉంటాయి అనమాట ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ లైన్ లో కనుక చూస్తే సో వాట్ ఈస్ ద రీజన్ టు గెట్ దోస్ వాల్యూస్ మీన్స్ బికాస్ దిస్ సి డాష్ ఈస్ వెరీ వెరీ హై అండ్ మోర్ ఓవర్ ఇఫ్ యువర్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ ఈస్ ఇఫ్ ఒమేగా ఎస్ omega is between omega s and omega p if your omega is between these two regions then that region that crystal circuit can consider inductive reactance and take the jx and the inductive reactance capacitive reactance and the man can tell you so which will decide that so you have omega the produced output frequency will decide that a produced frequency kanaka series and parallel resonating frequencies majjilo unte kanaka we can consider this this as a inductive reactance oka vela it is out of this range ante omega s kante takkuva omega p kante ekkuva unte kanaka then we can consider that as a capacitive uh, reactance so what we will get uh, with this crystal oscillator is that we will get a stable frequency oscillations if you run this circuit for more and more years also we won't get any frequency drift by using any change in frequency by using this crystal oscillators and now we are going to have uh, practical circuit practical circuit ipudu nenu ఒక టూ సర్క్యూట్స్ డ్రా చేసి చూపిస్తాను హౌ వీ కెన్ యూస్ ద క్రిస్టల్ వీ కెన్ యూస్ ద క్రిస్టల్ యాజ్ ఎ సిరీస్ రెజినేటింగ్ సర్క్యూట్ ఆర్ ద ప్యారలల్ రెజినేటింగ్ సర్క్యూట్ హౌ వీ విల్ యూజ్ దీస్ క్రిస్టల్స్ ఇన్ ద సర్క్యూటరీ సచ్ దట్ వీ విల్ గెట్ ద సిరీస్ రెజినేటింగ్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ యాజ్ వెల్ యాజ్ ద ప్యారలల్ రెజినేటింగ్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ దట్ వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు సీనా 
So here, these are the circuits which use the crystal as uh, crystal as the resonant element and uh, which will produce the oscillations. So this crystal is used in series with the in series with the collector to base circuit. So in this it is used in series. If this is used in series then uh, its impedance will be very less. So large current will flow from output to the input. So in series resonant mode this circuit is designed. So this circuit utilizes the crystal in the series resonant mode and it will produce some frequency. So here we are going to use the crystal in shunt mode, parallel mode. It is used in parallel resonant mode. It is used in parallel resonant mode. And you can observe one thing while you uh, observe it carefully. Two capacitors and this one crystal is designed here. And here, what is the circuit we are having with the two capacitors and one inductor is a Colpitts oscillator. So when this crystal is connected in parallel to, the, to these two capacitors, then it will act as an inductor. Because we learnt one thing that omega s is less than omega and omega is less than omega p. That means the parallel frequency, whatever the parallel resonant frequency, that should be that should be in this range. So here we, what we will produce is the omega. Omega that is nothing but which is a frequency with the, within the limits of the parallel resonant frequency. So if it is within this limits the inductance is represented as inductive impedance. So here this is the inductor and this works as a Colpitts oscillator and this is the example for parallel resonant mode crystal oscillator and moreover now we have to discuss two topics so that we will complete the crystal oscillators. What are the two topics? What is amplitude stabilization? Amplitude stabilization. and uh, frequency stabilization and frequency stabilization. Frequency stabilization. Now, what is the amplitude stabilization? You should know something about the frequency um, you should know something about the oscillators. So what is the oscillations we will get at the output of the oscillator? They should have certain frequency and their amplitude must be constant throughout the frequency. Whatever may be the amplitude of this should be coincide with this, should be coincide with this, should be coincide with this. So what does it say? It says that the amplitude is stable. The amplitude is stable. But actually what happens if we can get the damping oscillations or we can get the increasing amplitude oscillations we have seen. When we will get the damping oscillations? When A beta is less than 1. When we will get the increasing amplitude oscillations, then A beta is very very greater than 1. Very greater, very greater than 1. And what is the practical situation? In the practical situation, to satisfy the Bach-Hassan criterion, what we will take? 
we will not make a beta equal to 1 but what we will make is a beta is, is slightly greater than 1 that is equal to 1.00 1.05 like that we will make it slightly greater than 1 so if it is slightly greater than 1 what happens you will have the basic amplifiers block here and you will have a feedback block here and this will be connected to your basic amplifier. The output of the feedback network will be connected to the basic amplifier as an input. So what happens here? So if you give A beta greater than 1, slightly greater than 1, then what should happen? Your amplitude of the oscillation should be greater. It should be greater. And due to the non-linearity of the amplifier, it will clamp the amplitude of the it will clamp the amplitude of the oscillator and it will stabilize the amplitude of the oscillator. That means initially the amplitude will increase. If the amplitude is increased, what happens? The uh, input given to the basic amplifier will also increase. But uh, this will, due to the non-linearity of this amplifier circuit, the input is clamped. What is the meaning of clamping? Clamping of uh, some signal. What is the meaning of clamping? Suppose I have a signal like this. Then I will say that uh, if this is if the signal output is like this, that means I will say that this is a clamped signal. In the clamped ananate, whatever may be the amplitude, if a particular voltage, a critical voltage we see, e critical voltage ki no clamp chaso. And that means if the signal is having the amplitude more than this, higher than this also, the output will, have, will get the same uh, amplitude uh, as the output. That means, suppose you can have 5 volts ki clamp chase. 5 volts clamp chase. 5.5 volts, unna, the output will be only 5 volts. Other 6 volts, unna, the output will be only 5 volts. 7 volts only 5 volts. That means your output is clamped. Your output is clamped or your signal is clamped at a particular amplitude. So that is called clamping. So due to the non-linear action of the basic amplifier circuit, your input is going to be clamped. Whatever is the increment in the input but uh, only a controlled input will be given to this amplifier circuit and you will get the constant amplitude. So that is the amplitude stabilization which we will get with the um, amplifier, basic amplifier circuit itself. Due to the non-linearity of that circuit we will get the amplitude stable amplitude oscillations we will get. This is about the amplitude stabilization. And the next thing, frequency stabilization. This thing is a somewhat um, focused thing because the designer must focus on this. How we will get a stable frequency oscillations. And a stable frequency oscillations and frequency stabilization and the Suppose we have used, uh, we, uh, we have designed a circuit RC phase shift oscillator. RC phase shift oscillator. This e RC phase shift oscillator ne design this. We will use it in our laboratory. Ankuna. We will use it in our laboratory. This e RC phase shift oscillator, suppose you have designed to get 1 kilohertz. Okay, kilohertz frequency produced state and the new design. This. So, what is the uh, formula for the frequency of the RC phase shift oscillator? 1 by 2 pi root of R into C into, oh, sorry, 
वन बै टू पै आर्सी इंटू रूट सिक्स इधा मन को फार्मला सो वाट इज दट आर् दंपोने विच वि डिड द फ्रीक्वे आफ् दिस आर्सी फेट आसोलेटर रेसीस्ट वालू अंड कैपासीटर वालू विल डिड दिस फ्रीक्वे रेसीस्टर वालू आर् कैपासीटर वालू विल डिड दिस फ्रीक्वे सो फस्ट आफ आल टू गेट वन कि हिट्स फ्रीक्वे you will decide some value you will give some value and you will select some components to give this 1 kilohertz frequency so while you are using this rc phase shift as an oscillator on the long run of this circuit on the, on a long uh, time span that means after 10 years or something then your frequency will not be 1 kilohertz there will be a drift in your frequency that means there will be a change in your frequency Let it may give some 900 hertz. Unquote. 900 hertz or so. You you didn't change anything in your circuit. No way much less. Because your frequency is changed. So the what we we will call it as instability in the frequency. What we will call instability in the frequency. Your frequency is not at all stable. From this um, a long run of the circuit. So what happened to uh, get the change in frequency means uh, there will be a factor which is called aging, aging of the components. So some factor which is called aging of the components. That means uh, after a long utilization of the elements uh, due to the uh, aging effect. And a chala kalam vadam valla dantlo. दाने वालूस मारपस्म दट इज का एजी सो दिन वाल यू वि गेट ड्रिफ्ट इन फ्रीक्वे इंक इदोक रीजन इंकोटी इंका एपड़ू नीत फ्रीक्वे चेंजेस वस्ताई दिन सप्लै वोलटेज इज चेज नीचे इनपुट ए सप्लाई लाइन तस्को दिन वाल यू वि गेट द फ्रीक्वे ड्रिफ्ट दट इज चेज इन फ्रीक्वे अंड मोर ओवर इंकोटी इंकोक रीजन एटे फ्रीक्वे इनस्टेबिटी की इंकोक रीजन ट्रांसीस्टर् पारामीटर्स चेज सो वे दीस ट्रांसीस्टर् पारामीटर्स विल चेज ट्रांसीस्टर् पारामीटर्स विल चेज ड्यू टू द टेमपरेशर अंत टेमपरेशर इंक्रीज ट्रांसीस्टर् पारामीटर्स दट बीटा दोज पारामीटर्स विल चेज Change in a particular amount of the your frequency will change, and also there is another factor due to which your frequency is changed is a uh, stray capacitance. What is the stray capacitance? Stray capacitance and the end. Stray capacitance. So already you know this. What is a stray capacitance means? In um, in experiments or in circuits, you are going to use your transistor. So transistor is a very small device, and it will have three leads. Transistor ke mood leads hunte. A mood leads koda they are very closely placed. They are very closely placed, and three leads are nothing but base emitter, collector are nothing but conducting leads. That means they are conductors. They are made with the conductor conductive material. and uh, there is a gap between these two any of these two leads that means uh, two metallic conductors with a gap or air as a dielectric between them that will definitely act as a capacitor at certain frequencies of operation these two leads uh, will create a capacitance and it is not the human गिवन कैपासीटे अंत मशि पेटिंद कैपासीटे अंड यू डोंट नो वाट द वालू आफ् दट कैपासीटे आलो इट ईज द कैपासीटे विच अकर् ड्यू टू दू टू द मेटीरिय आफ द मेटीरियल आफ द एलमेंट्स आर् समथिंग एक्सेट्रा चूस्टर ट्रांसमिशन लाइन उ अंत पवर डिस्ट्रिब्यूटे रूद लाइन उ ट्रांसमिशन लाइन अट आ ट्रांसमिशन लाइन दें तो तैयार दे आर् मेड वि कंडक्ट मेटीरिय रिट मध्य गैप उ सो टू क 
conductors with air as a dielectric will make a capacitive effect. And the transmission lines study chess it up, they will take into consideration the capacitive effect of the lines also. And indeed they are called the stray capacitance. They are not the capacitors which we will uh, we will give to the circuit, but uh, they will occur due to the operation of the circuit. So, this stray capacitance is not So, it is not We have to consider this also. How this stray capacitance is going to affect your frequency means, in this, in this formula, you are having C. So, is C and what is the it consider only the capacitors of the feedback circuit. Feedback circuit lo capacitors consider just And also it will consider the stray capacitance also while this frequency is going to be calculated. The inflow no which the capacitors already a circuit lo unde stray capacitance is koda consider just kunte. Then your uh, uh, value of C will be changed. That is, it will not be the actual value. So, your frequency is going to be changed. So, there are so many reasons. There are so many reasons to cause a drift in the frequency. And uh, we can change or we can modify uh, only one or two reasons. But we can't change all other. We can't, um, what we fix all other problems. So, what we will do, we go for the crystal oscillator. Crystal oscillator, frequency, it only depends upon the crystal material, but it won't depend upon the auxiliary elements or auxiliary circuit devices. So, that is the reason crystal oscillator frequency is going to be very stable frequency. Ah, at like, <coughs> and, uh, and uh, we know that transistor parameters are inherent parameters. And then the, uh, the, they will born parameters. Transistor tayar jesna pude parameters than characteristics and ni danto par tayar yoste ka We won't, uh, we won't change them. Man, we change as tamu already made of chapter lo EDC lo nech kuna. Enta the, and the biasing techniques and stabilization techniques. And the end of a transistor is stable to operate shade and efficient to operate shade and put biasing techniques use just them. Allage stabilization techniques and use just them. Stabilization techniques and the end and the suppose transistor law which a problem m tie and a large collector current will make a problem for the transistor. Large output current. Uh, output current it will increase the temperature of the transistor. Junction temperature pinch collector. Junction temperature parent one again this temperature will increase the collector current. Collector current again it will increase the junction temperature. So they will become cumulative. They will become cumulative and leads to a concept which is called thermal runaway and Thermal runaway ki lead chase na the transistor will damage, it will burn off. And then khali So what we have to do to uh, make this transistor work satisfactorily, we have to control the collector current. This collector current ni control chayalante so many techniques. Na the cool ayi ondar. And kani me computers kani, laptops kani, cool environment lo. And then ni uh, computer lab si AC lo pertar. And kani. And moreover, in the very temperature sensitive device, transistor. Alage, you can just have coolant. Coolant technique and aerobatic electrical vital coolant. Power transistor. Power transistor low, the power consumption will be more. Then you can just have a metallic cap pattern. Metallic cap. Metallic cap pattern whatever temperature is generated within the transistor will be absorbed by the metallic cap and it will be spread into the environment. So in that way the cooling is done. So here what we will do, we can't, um, um, we can't change this characteristic but what we can do that some devices are used, sensistor, thermistor and some special diodes are used so that we can divert the large currents of collector 
and we can uh, save our device. So, in frequency stabilization, we can't fix all the problems, but the main uh, component problems can be fixed and uh, components can be seen uh, uh, will not uh, change with the temperature and etc. So, the frequency stabilization, we go for the crystal oscillators and with the certain uh, required uh, measures we will take uh, so that uh, the frequency will not drift in all other oscillators. So, this is about the crystal oscillators.